There could be a breakthrough in the stalemate in Congress over the debt ceiling. Senate Republicans have made an offer to Democrats to extend it, but only into December. That means that the country would be safe from defaulting on its debt obligations for at least a couple more months. CBS News Chief White House Correspondent Nancy Cordes has more on the deal. With Washington hurtling toward insolvency, Republican leader Mitch McConnell offered a surprise concession. He said his party would let Democrats raise the debt ceiling short term for about two months. Why should we accept any part of a BS offer? McConnell's new offer came as President Biden poured on the pressure. It's about paying for what we owe. Enlisting major banking CEOs to help sound the alarm. We are starting to experience elevated volatility in the markets. But the cascading effects in the ensuing weeks could go anywhere from a recession to a complete catastrophe for the global economy. And I don't know why anyone would take a chance like that. Defaulting could also disrupt Social Security payments for nearly 50 million seniors and military benefits for two and a half million veterans. Why? Louis no Franklin served two tours in Iraq. There's no reason for it other than it's a giant chess game that the Senate and the House play. And it, we're the ones who pay the price. It sucks. Republicans say they don't want default. They're just trying to highlight the Democrats' multi-trillion dollar plans for new social programs. I'd kind of like to know how much money they intend to spend. And they don't want to say that because I think when they do, the American people are going to be the first ones to object to it. And Nancy Cordes joins me now from the White House. Nancy, this proposal to extend the debt ceiling through December is, in fact, a shift in the strategy from Republicans. Tell us what led up to this change in their position. It's a big shift. Democrats are calling it a cave. Uh, Republicans calling it a nod to reality. Mitch McConnell kind of surprised everyone when he came out uh, and said that he would now be open to a short-term increase in the debt ceiling. Democrats will still have to supply all of the votes themselves, but Republicans won't stand in the way. Um, the reason that he's doing that is, A, because, you know, we're seeing much more pressure coming from all sides. The business community, the president, uh, certainly Democrats in Congress, and some rising discomfort among Republicans about the strategy. So uh, what he has done is to say, OK, we're fine with Democrats raising the debt ceiling for now, but they're going to have to do it again in two months, and they're going to have to use this cumbersome, um, more difficult process called reconciliation to do it. That's what Democrats have been avoiding from the beginning. So even if they do lift the debt ceiling now, uh, Lana, we're going to be watching this exact same fight play out again in a month. And that is sure to uh, leave a lot of Democrats and certainly leave the White House very frustrated. They don't want to get caught in this cycle of constantly fighting to do something that they believe both parties should work together to do. Sure. And if this is a political battle, then Democrats are now on the record voting in favor of raising the debt ceiling twice, both through the reconciliation later and uh, this vote right now. So given all of that and given the stakes, Nancy, how is the White House reacting to this proposal? Well, it's interesting because the White House press secretary, Jen Psaki, came out and gave her daily briefing shortly after uh, the Republican leader had made this latest offer. And it was clear that uh, while she, she wanted to come out and say how unnecessary it all was and say, look, if he's willing to raise it short term, why not just raise it long term and give everyone the certainty? She didn't want to definitively close the door on it because she knew that Democrats were still meeting to discuss all of this and figure out their way forward. And the White House didn't want to get out in front of that. Uh, there's no question that Democrats are going to argue that this is a bad idea, uh, that it makes no sense to lift the debt ceiling temporarily when they're just going to have to go ahead and lift it again. But uh, they may decide that accepting this offer and moving on is the best way for them to be able to pivot and focus on their agenda. After all, the main thing Democrats want to be focusing on right now 
is rounding up the votes for the president's big two trillion dollar anywhere between two and three point five trillion dollar uh, spending package that would create new child care programs uh, has new uh, health care uh, uh, provisions it really deals with a whole range of, of educational uh, and social needs and they feel that they are very close to the finish line perhaps in the next few weeks they could get it done so they'd rather be working working on that than fighting to the death over the debt ceiling for the next couple of weeks. So at least uh, this will get that out of the way. They can try to get the president's uh, big agenda past the finish line and then go back to dealing with the debt ceiling. And Nancy, when we're talking about President Biden's social spending plan, uh, as you mentioned, it looks like in the negotiations that the final price tag has now come down to around the $2 trillion range. Um, how close are they to an actual deal among Democrats to actually pass uh, that social infrastructure and then sort of that hard infrastructure bill? It, it sounds like there's some positive movement. What obstacles still need to be overcome? Hard to say how close they are because when the two Democratic holdouts, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, are in public, and he's uh, been much more chatty than she has with reporters, uh, they don't give a lot of details about the negotiations that are taking place. The White House doesn't give many details either. Uh, Joe Manchin continues to insist that he's really closer to $1.5 trillion. He doesn't uh, appear, at least in public, to be giving much. And so those talks continue you behind the scenes. Um, keep in mind that the challenge here goes beyond just the White House negotiating with Manchin and Cinema. Uh, Democratic leaders and the White House also have to talk to the rest of their party to say, okay, you're going to have to be giving up a lot of what was originally in this bill. What are you most willing to give up? What do we have to just cut out entirely? Which programs can we save uh, but, 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 but change so that they're not quite as expensive so that then they can can go to Mansion and Cinema and say, "Okay, here's something closer to two trillion, uh, but we do it by getting rid of this, 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 and this." And so, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, uh, it's sort of a multi-pronged negotiation that is going on, and you've got this new deadline pressure with Democratic leaders uh, who have blown through several deadlines already, now saying that they would like to get this done by the end of October. So they've bought themselves a few weeks here. We'll continue watching. All right, Nancy, thank you. You're welcome.